Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm back with the Orion Carrier Plane and its upgraded version with the custom wing pieces and control surfaces and I think I have nailed the problem that I had in the previous video. It was down to the rudders. I basically uh, took off the pieces, replaced them with the B9 procedural wings one at a time to see which pieces were the cause of our roll problems in the previous video and ultimately figured out that it was the rudders and the problem was that they were oriented wrong in Unity slash Blender. Uh, they needed to be flat in uh, flat so that the thickness was in the Z direction but instead it was in the wrong direction. So uh, they were flat in the Y, uh, sorry, they're flat in the X direction as they should be but they were sort of rotated wrong uh, in the other two axes. So, yeah, they were not acting properly. They were acting as rudders properly. The game sort of understood that, but I guess FAR did not like the way that they were oriented. So that's why we had the roll problem, I believe. Uh, so we will try it out again, and this time I hope to land it. So without further ado, here we go. So, all right, we are going to head out of Boca Chica and on to Cape Canaveral. There will be other... Different uh, changes to this that need to be made. For instance, I need to make a mount and I want to replace the engines and There's a good reason for replacing the engines. I'll discuss that on the way up, but throttle up SAS on ignition And launch. I really need to remember to aim camera as well. So it doesn't jerk up when I release the release it from the pad. All sorts of little details uh, the importance of figuring this out, of course, is that uh, people already want me to make the control surfaces for the plane mod, and, well, that would be hard if I can't get the control surfaces right, right? I mean, uh, it's nice and all asking me for control surfaces, but if I keep getting them wrong, that's not going to help anybody. So, and there are a lot of control surfaces. In terms of for the plane mod, the problem is we would have too many control surfaces running around, so we would need to integrate them into the wing part. Uh, though all moving ones I've already made, so it's the problem of integrating into the wing part and getting far to understand that, uh, you know, this little bit is the moving part, please calculate it correctly. That's a whole other business compared to what I'm doing here. These are not in integrated into the wing part, though perhaps in the future I can do that. Uh, the problem with doing that is that they have to be oriented in the x-axis properly and they're sort of tilted so it's complicated. It's easier if the wing is such that the part that turns the control surface is directly in the x-axis. The x-axis is the axis in which it turns as opposed to something that's sort of diagonal like this or like the tail surfaces. So. Yeah, there are all sorts of subtleties to how this all works. And I'm also partly trying to figure all that out. But eventually, hopefully, I can make improvements. Okay, we are doing the turn. I'll stop it short of 4,000 meters per second, which is the normal amount. Uh, I'm going for 3,950 or so. I think it might be better in terms of actually getting to Cape Canaveral without overshooting so much. Okay, 3950, RCS on, and separation. Uh, I, I would like this thing to go forward if possible. Ah, uh, we've got this stuff. Uh, let, yeah, let's just skip that. Yeah, I would get, like to get it away from our sort of um, render range, but might be too much trouble. Well, now I've got that command in, maybe I'll do it. Okay, we're controlling from the wrong thing. Okay, that should get it away. So now, uh, why would replacing the engines help? Well, the thing is, this was originally balanced with the idea that we would be putting jet engines in the back, and we might still do that, but uh, it is actually nose-heavy right now, because we did 
balance everything with the jet engines in mind. So having slightly heavier engines than the Raptor engines would be a good thing actually. It'll pull the center of mass a little bit further back and be more as intended. And uh, yeah, in general I think that'll be beneficial. You'll see that we're uh, sort of uh, using a lot of pitch authority on the way down and we could avoid that by just uh, having the center of mass further back. And so basically replacing the Raptor engines with engines that are heavier, uh, have less chamber pressure, uh, would be a better deal overall in numerous respects. I mean, it might cut down on our payload capacity, but um, we're doing pretty well on that, I think, compared to what I was expecting out of this. And basically, we're going to lose communication at some point, and I just expect Smart ASS to hold this pitch continuously all the way down until we regain communications closer to Cape Canaveral after the plasma blackout. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. And we'll see how it goes. There is an expected oscillation in roll and yaw, by the way. That happens just because of our control system. And so it'll get fidgety. The one thing we don't want to see is it consistently maxing out in one direction. That would, that's, was the problem and that would be bad. Then it'll get imbalanced. But it oscillating just means we need to tune our control in some way. Okay, we are in the serious part. There will be high g-forces. And here's the oscillation I'm talking about. That's okay. It's not wonderful, but it's okay. It probably has to do with the aerodynamic control surfaces. On the first entry into the atmosphere, it might be good to have them locked and just use the RCS, but oftentimes even the RCS wiggles. Here you can see the pitch maxed out and we can't really hold the 30 degree pitch that I've assigned. And this is where, you know, shifting the center mass a little bit might help. And we still have no communication, but I wasn't intending on giving it any new commands anyway. You can see the oscillation has stopped properly. It had better stop, I mean, that that's for sure. It's just the suddenness of hitting the atmosphere and the control surfaces reacting that uh, partly causes that. Okay, now we have comms. I don't know if the air brakes do much up here, but well, I was going to try them, but they're not popping out. Okay, well, we might not have air brakes. I mean, we have air brakes, but they might not be doing anything. Deploy extended. It says they're extended. Retracted. Extended. But they're not showing that they're extended. I don't know if they're really acting like they're extended. Based on our speed, it doesn't look like they're doing anything. So, yeah, the air brakes aren't working. Well, we are out of communication again. That is a plasma one, obviously, considering our proximity to Cape Canaveral. Air brakes would be super helpful right now. Incidentally, if uh, we used atmospheric autopilot instead of smart ASS, that oscillation would probably stop. We'll do that in a sec. I'll switch from smart ASS to it, but I want to be under Mach 3 for that. I don't really want to make a switch at over Mach 3. Smart ASS is sort of necessary for holding it when we don't have arrow during the initial part of hitting the atmosphere, so 
Can't really use atmospheric autopilot for that part, I think. Not sure. It's just wog wobbling about right now. Getting pretty far away. We do have some fuel for a boost back if necessary, but I wanted to avoid this. But uh, we did get through the tough part. We have survived as expected. Okay, switching. On atmospheric autopilot now and turning around. So you see the wobbling has stopped. So it's just a control, a, um, control method issue. And this is partly why we can't just do a return to launch site sort of situation turn. You can see how we are losing speed as we turn. So that's why we can't go back to Boca Chica or anything like that. Um, the speed that we lose while we turn is too much. And the fact that we take so long to turn while we're losing the speed, which is good for slowing down and not dying of course uh, if it couldn't lose speed while turning like this that would mean that it had no drag <laughs> and if it has no drag it's just got burn up when it gets back into the atmosphere so you know we really have no choice in order to avoid that the falcon 9 rocket which is somewhat totally different uh, does a burn to slow down when it's coming back down, of course. That doesn't work well with this because the direction it's coming down in does not have the engine plasma cushion effect. Right? The engines aren't on that surface. Okay, well we can probably try and tilt up and do the boost back. We don't need to see where the cape is. But we're gonna go up a bit. Now I've got a problem in that I still can't use the air brakes so I don't know how much of a boost back we need. But that should be a start. We're two degrees away from Cape Canaveral. So that's probably about 220 kilometers. Now the best way to get more drag is to increase the size of the wings. But why this should have less... Then of course that would you know, get us closer to Cape Canaveral. If we slowed down quicker we would end up at Cape Canaveral. But why with these wings, we ended up not slowing down quicker is a question. If we could use the rudders as deployable air brakes, that would maybe help. Hmm. They do have a, this is a spoiler function. Can I turn these into air brakes, do you suppose? Okay, they're equal. That's probably important. I don't really want to slow down right now. So we'll wait on that idea. I'm gonna use the engines again. I'm not super convinced at this point that we are actually going to get back to Cape Canaveral here. But we'll get as close as possible. I'm gonna attempt to head for the stock runway instead of the shuttle runway and that is because it is oriented in the right direction and we're not gonna have to do a big turn. It's sort of a better bet considering our situation right now. Yeah, as you might expect, this is not exactly that much of a glider. Okay, well, since we are going to end up in the water I'm gonna try the air brakes, the, the rudder air brakes. Uh, okay, that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay, yeah, it doesn't like it when you use those as air brakes, it turns out. Uh, oh gosh. I don't know if I can get this back under control. Well, I guess on the bright side, being in a flat spin probably helps with this thing's survival given Kerbal physics and buoyancy. 
All right. Well, okay. So basically, the big problem is solved, but we have some minor details to work out as far as the trajectory is concerned. It seems more prone to overshooting. And I think I was contemplating uh, new locations and maybe if we launch from Mexico and land in the Bahamas, that's a little bit further. That's about 150 extra miles, which would be just about right for this. And that might be, that might be interesting. It's just basically moving the whole apparatus further south by a notch, right? Instead of going from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral, we go from Tampico to the Bahamas. And maybe that would work out nicely. So anyway, that's a thought. But the big problem is solved. It can actually re-enter and stay stable uh, with the minor wobbliness aside. So progress. And I hope to get back to doing the To Mars and Beyond series uh, soon. Because I was working on this for that, of course. And that's part of the delay in that series because I was trying to get a better version of this. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.